starting 2014 with a complex failed corneal transplant done previously for a severe infection that caused the eye to perforate. Uh, this had a very poor prognosis. As you can see, this transplant has failed. Uh, so I'm offering a repeat procedure here to regain uh, quality of vision and uh, try to improve the overall internal structures of the eye doing a controlled entry here. You can see the very thick uh, failed uh, uh, cornea here. Uh, you're also going to see a lot of uh, scarring inside the eye, anterior and posterior synechia. Uh, these need to be very carefully lysed and I'll remove any non-viable tissue, uh, tissue that uh, is causing a problem and not salvageable. And uh, a lot of vascularity here due to the previous inflammation and infection. And uh, you also see that there's a fairly dense cataract. Um, this is a sneaky here that requires sharp dissection since it did not uh, resolve with blunt dissection and viscodissection. This is vision blue. This is an attempt to better outline the capsule of the cataract controlled entry here with the super blade. A lot of back pressure so I've got to be very careful here that this doesn't the back pressure doesn't cause the uh, tear to run out into the periphery. So I'm just going to be very gingerly uh, removing the anterior portion of the capsule striving to keep this relatively small. And then behind this, this capsule, you'll see a fairly intumescent lens with a dense uh, nucleus that I'm managing here first with a hydro dissection and then a hydro, di uh, hydro expression with just manual uh, additional manual expression as well using a lens loop to get the, uh, to get the lens off the field. And then uh, we'll address the residual cortex that's remaining there. We'll want to use a uh, irrigation aspiration unit since it's not a closed system. I'm using a high flow state that essentially flushes a lot of the cortex out of the capsular fornix and also uh, removed with, uh, with vacuum. Uh, in a closed system, viscoelastic would be used to open up the capsular bag. In an open sky system like this, it's predominantly a, uh, a lubricant used to get this three-piece lens in. The, the, uh, the one-piece uh, Gumby-style acrylic lens wouldn't be as well suited in this, in this situation. It would be a little harder to get in and keep in. And the uh, three-piece lens works a little bit better in this open sky scenario. Very careful here to put this in without causing a, an extension or tear out into the periphery of the anterior uh, capsule. Using the donor cornea here, uh, matched uh, size-wise with the uh, recipient bed with just a quarter millimeter difference and using a 10 nylon suture to, uh, to secure this, this donor in place. Normally I'd use a uh, running suture, maybe a combined running suture, but with the degree of vascularity, the, uh, the, the, the overall high risk for rejection I'm going to use uh, interrupted sutures and uh, bury the knots uh, for comfort and to reduce inflammation. We'll go ahead and just uh, put 16 interrupted sutures in place here. Burying the knots at the very end, again for comfort and to reduce inflammation. Uh, also to uh, uh, reduce uh, risk of infection, I'll give a combination of steroid and antibiotic injection at the end. And overall, this, uh, this has turned out well. So if we kind of review and go back to where we were in the beginning, this looked like it had a fairly ominous prognosis. And then during the middle of the case, uh, there were several challenges with scarring and bleeding and a cataract. And uh, in the end, I'd say we had a, a strong finish and a good beginning to 2014. Thank you.